that's a common name, gill slit, because the name itself would suggest we have two things, gills and slits. There's two things we do not have in the embryo. One is gills and the other is slits. What we have are uh, laryngeal folds. Uh, these are sort of folds in the neck. They're due in part to, because of, the again, the growth of the tissue uh, causing folds. There are little ridges of tissue uh, in these folds, uh, but they never form slits normally. Now, there could be some pathological conditions where you have a hole in the side of your neck which develops embryologically. Uh, but these uh, laryngeal folds uh, are not gills. So sometimes they give it a scientific name, they'll call them pharyngeal folds, which suggests they are related to the pharynx and, and gills. But the proper name is laryngeal folds. They're in the area of our larynx. And uh, they have an embryological fate, which has nothing to do with respiration. At no time in the development of the embryo do the laryngeal folds participate in gas exchange, as a proper gill would do, uh, I guess some people think that uh, the babies have gills so they can breathe under amniotic fluid. <laughs> That's the only liquid, uh, and they're swimming in it, so that might make sense. The problem is, of course, gas exchange doesn't occur with any gas that might be in the amniotic fluid. It's coming from the mother's blood via the placenta. Uh, so embryologically, they go to form other structures in the body, endocrine glands, part of the oral cavity, uh, various structures, none of which have anything to do with respiration or breathing. So uh, it's one of those things you would hope would be a dead issue by now. It's sort of like the appendix has no function. That should be long over. We're past that. The appendix has well-known functions. Uh, or the tail. Oh, we have a tail, as you've, as you've heard. Again, tail is a common word. Uh, we have a linear vertebral column, and as you probably noticed, linear structures are defined as lines that have two ends. Uh, if you try to cut off one of the two ends, say one end of a piece of rope, you pretty much continue to get two ends, whatever you do. This is a law of nature. Uh, so our vertebral column is linear. It has two ends, and one end has a head on it. Uh, brain hooked to the spinal cord. Now the other end must end somewhere. <laughs> One of our choices is that it will end nowhere. No, it will end somewhere. And wherever it ends, there will be an evolutionist standing there pointing saying, aha, a tail. What's the alternative? Now during development, the, uh, the nervous system develops precociously. Both the heart and the central nervous system sort of start getting ahead of other parts of the body. And so uh, the vertebral column, uh, the spinal cord, for example, can actually protrude beyond the crown rump length of the developing embryo. And it kind of looks like a, a tail for a while. But the rest of the body keeps up. And our spinal cord ends up ending about in the small of our back. In fact, uh, an accurate way to find out where your spinal cord ends is to simply feel of where your hip bones under your belt are, the top edge of what we call the ilium, and follow that line right around from hip bone to hip bone, and you will have crossed the tip of the spinal cord, which is now far from a tail. It's shorter than the rest of the body. But, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, it has none of the characteristics we associate with the tail. It doesn't have the sort of muscles that would move the tail around and what have you. Uh, others have said, well, whether it's a tail or not, that little structure properly called the coccyx, uh, which means it looks like a bird's beak, uh, has no function. It's left over from when we did have a tail. That's one of the arguments. We call that the vestigial organ argument. Uh, that turns out not to be the case either. If I had to rank order all the bones in the body on how important they were to us based on how many muscles are attached to this bone coming from how many different directions, the coccyx might be the winner. Uh, this is one of the reasons why when you fall on your tailbone, <laughs> there's three positions you cannot bear to be in because of the pain. One is standing, the other is sitting, and the third is lying down. It hurts no matter what you do. So. Uh, 
But that's because a lot of muscles are attached to that little piece of bony real estate. Uh, there are six major muscles and several other smaller muscles that converge from the pelvic brim, which is like a funnel, down to the bottom of our uh, pelvic region, where all these muscles converge in that little tiny piece of bone. Starting from the front, the pubic muscle, the pubic pubococcygeus goes to that little bone. And then from our iliac bones, we just mentioned uh, the iliococcygeus. And then from the back, there's another pair called the coccygeus. And there are other muscles. And collectively, they form a muscular bowl deep down in our uh, pelvic region. And that muscular bowl has to be traversed by everything that comes in and out of our body, urinary system, rectal system, reproductive. Uh, during birth, that bowl has to extend the hole in it enough for the baby's head and body to get through. Uh, the pelvic diaphragm uh, serves for those of us who walk upright as a way to keep things intact. Uh, what sorts of organs are down there in our uh, uh, pelvic region? Uh, we have a urinary bladder, which can vary in size depending on how full it is. Uh, in women, we'd have a uterus in that general region. Uh, we'd have uh, the uh, sigmoid colon coming into this area, an anus, uh, rectum. Uh, so there are a lot of structures there that need to be supported when we're standing upright in this bowl supports them. Uh, were it not for this bowl, uh, theoretically, we might cough vigorously, you know, and it could be whoopy. <laughs> uh, things would herniate right through. Uh, so it, it's an exceedingly important function involving lots of muscles. To continue to claim that it has no function is just bad science. Now, you'll often get these kind of rebuttals. They'll say, well, okay, but if the coccyx doesn't develop, then these same muscles can attach to the sacrum. Well, there are all kinds of make-dos that, that can happen when you have developmental defects, but that hardly proves your organ is without function.